Okay guys, I know a long time no see here at BDBSSB. Gonna try to do a quick video. I know I get long-winded here. Um, first off, huge credit to Dogface. He did this tutorial. Uh, he had actually uh, talked to a guy by the name of Scooter's Workbench on FS's uh, Discord. Uh, we were kind of back and forth learning this and like I said, he, he went full out and did this excellent tutorial. I wanted to do a video um, to try to give a little more verbal explanation and actually show you how it's done. He does a great job here. I just thought maybe doing this video would help uh, help people understand it a little more as well. I'm going to link this um, this post from Farmer Boys with this video as well. Once again, full credit to Dogface, Scooter's Workbench. Um, I did have some help from Hungry Cow early on uh, doing a windrow effect, and that's that's where this comes from. So basically, uh, combine header effects, windrow effects, um, even tracks can be done with this array. Um, I just want to give you a quick example um, of what I utilized it for. Here, here's an idea of a mod I'm working on. It's just a uh, showing it coming out and bouncing off the chute and going down. I'm, I'm going to do some more work to make it look for you know look like what I'm trying to do here, but. Like I said, it's such a simple file, and trying to edit this file is, for me, was nearly impossible. I tried doing some different things. You had to convert it, and it just was a mess. Uh, like I said, to get uh, the loading wagon almost identical to this, just picking up grass and hay and whatnot. Um, that's where Hungry, Hungry Cow was helpful on basically mirroring an effect, because I was trying to do a windrow and, and uh, not knowing how to do this yet. He mirrored it for me, but like I said, that was that was a pain trying to get that file to work correctly. It was getting all kind of texture errors and everything else. But just want to give you an idea, quick, what's going on here. Like I said, I did I did an effect for the soil, as you can see, the rocks kicking in there as well. Like I said that's it's pretty crazy when I'm going to show you what this this uh, actual file looks like. How simple it is that it, it's doing this much work, and it, as you can even see in here in the middle, I was even able to speed it up with the animation. And that's, that's all this is, is just making a simple animation file. Um, so I said that's just kind of showing you how powerful this tool is, I guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump out of here. We're just going to we're gonna go right into Blender. I want to show you a couple of things as well right off the bat. This is how simple this file is. I mean, this is just a shared WinRow uh, array left, and that's what had to be mirrored to do what I was trying to do. As you can see, there's a curve there. And I'm zoomed way in because if you go to Image, resize we're talking 53 by 3 I mean it's such a simple little file um, and you can find this information as well because we're gonna have to get into this a little bit uh, let's see arrays so if you go into farming simulator data effects um, that was simply in the windrower and there's the arrays themselves um, one thing you're gonna want to kind of look at to understand a little bit and once again, Dogface does a great job of explaining this, where this come, where these numbers come from. Um, when you go into Cultivator, there's a Cultivator Effects. Um, this is the only one I've been able to use on a placeable. I'm not going to get too in-depth on that. It's another video once I can figure out a little more what's going on there. But these effect meshes, these numbers right here are very important because this is the empties we're going to use in our animation. And this is the second set of numbers that we'll use when we're exporting. It's just simply your num number of rows and your row length. Um, as far as I can tell, if you make an animation with 60 empties and use a row length of 18, you can use these numbers in your XML and go backwards. But if, if you just have a texture file that's a 1 and an 18 and an input a 16 and 18, it'll accept those numbers. It won't give you the error, but you're only going to get the effect of the one. It's not going to upscale it and, and use the extra the rows, I guess, if that makes any sense. And, and these numbers are very important because if you try to put like a 25 and an 18 in there, you're going to get an error saying that that texture isn't supported. The row length and uh, number of rows is not supported. Um, so we're just going to jump right in. And what I did is I brought in that, that machine that you saw on the on the placeable you kind of need and he talks about this in the tutorial as well you need a little bit of a scale a scaled object to judge this off of because if you just try start to try to make this animation it's you don't know what you end up when you get into the actual game and the engine itself so um, what I did is I actually picked a point 
on this object and I made it uh, I took it to the um, actual location an or, or I can't talk sorry the origin of the <laughs> location because if, if you have your origin here and you start making your effect over here you're, you're gonna be off that far on your uh, transform when you actually put it in a giant editor and again I'm not gonna get into that much but you want to try to start your effect at the origin or you're gonna have some issues trying to get it in the right location scale and everything else and like I said you can to get that effect to look different on there I can actually scale that just blank empty transform in Giants Editor and it'll even change how it looks so I'm a, I'm already rambling on here I'm gonna try to speed up here and just show you how simple I said we're gonna use the the number I was talking about we're just gonna do a simple 3 and an 18 um, you're gonna need a little bit of keyframe experience which again I'm gonna show you that but it's very simple and again Dogface has a link to show how keyframes work in your video first thing you want to do um, we want to make sure we're at zero and I say first thing but another key thing to do here is if you do not save this file somewhere so I'm gonna hit save as and I'm just gonna go right to my desktop and I've got array video I'm just gonna call it array video ray vid and I'm gonna save so if you don't save when you go to export it I have no idea where it's gonna end up so that's why I say try to save your file right away so when you get all this work done and you go to export you're gonna know where to find it um, but all we're going to do is we're going to simply hit shift a and we're going to add an empty plain axis is all i need so that's one empty um i'm just going to hit shift d i'm just going to hit g y 0.05 just to move it over a little bit and i'm going to hit this empty again hit shift d enter g y and negative 0.05 you can take these and put them wherever you want all it's going to do is going to take these it's going to take the path and follow what we're making off these empties in the animation now since we're at zero and we want to start it at zero at that location I'm going to select all these empties all I do is hit that hit shift select the, the last one and to insert a keyframe all we hit is I and then I do location and rotation which is the O here I just hit O I just saw it on one of the keyframe videos so that's what I've been doing you could probably simply just do location but I'm going to do O for location and rotation so we have our first keyframe set as you can see it popped up a little diamond down here um, now before you move anything make sure you move your uh, your timeline and we're just gonna go to 50 and hit enter as you can see it moved over we didn't move any of the empties yet because if you start moving thing it's gonna mess up your your animation so I'm gonna simply just take this and I'm gonna take all these empties I'm gonna hit G X just to move it out and then G y we're going to move it over here to the side like so i'm going to get it somewhere i'm going to go more x out a little bit more g z to move it down so we're right on the edge of that shoot i'm happy with that for now <clears throat> again i'm going to hit io that sets our keyframe at 50. again i'm just going to go 50 again so 100 and we're just going and I'm just making a simple zigzag pattern just to show you how this works and G X we're gonna move it out here we're gonna go G Y we're gonna move over to here G Z to move it down to the bottom of the chute again that's close enough for me I'm just gonna hit I O um, again we're just gonna hit 150 to move our keyframes and I'm just going to go G y we're going to move it somewhat to the center g x move it out here g z to move down here um and then again i'm just going to hit io and then this kind of gives you just your preview playing on here so i'm just going to um, hit 150 so we can play this quick just to show you what's going on so i hit the play button and as you can see it's just coming over here zigzagging zigzagging over here shooting over here and then ending over here right now now if I want to make a drastic move and this here you can switch between your key this will take you to your last one and then it just does your steps so you know we're back at 100 we're up to 150 so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go uh, let's just go like say 1 160 is an idea and then if I move this G X way out here only making a 10 keyframe move basically I hit IO save that and if I take that to 160 
and I hit play, what you're going to see is making a nice steady move out, back, down to the center, and then all of a sudden it's going to take off real fast. I just give you an idea what these keyframes, I believe they're milliseconds. I can't tell you for sure. I haven't studied it enough to, to tell you, I guess. Um, and then again, I'm just going to go 200, just kind of end this out. We're just going to take this and just go G, Z. We're just going to move it down. G, X, move it over here. And we'll take this to 200 as well. 200. Um, I'm going to hit IO to set those keyframes. We're going to hit play. Again, it's just going to zig over, zag over, go down. That's going to our quick move and just go down. So that's just a simple zigzag effect. Um, just to give us, show us it's gonna be different than what I had on the screen before. So again, very simple. We're just gonna end to bring up our Giants exporter or our tool menu or active tools. And I'm gonna hit Giants exporter here. Um, bring these out of the way because I wanna kind of follow, look at my instructions that actually Dog Face had written for me before and I kind of went over them to understand what I'm doing. Um, this is where our numbers start to come into effect. Like I said, three was our first number. That was the empties. Um, and like I said, you have your number of rows and your row length. So that's what's important here. So we're going to go into tools and then we want to go get this right. Object data from animations is the, the actual tool we're going to use. Now I already messed with this. I'm going to hit clear list because it's already popped up. I'd already done a a sample here to make sure I could mimic what I wanted to do here without messing up too much. Um, what I want to do is I want to select all the empties that I made and I'm going to hit load selected. I'm just going to load them into the box down here. Now we had our three for our empties. Um, now we had talked about we were going to use 18 so that's our row length so that's where the I'm going to say amount relative and amount fixed comes in. Both these numbers need to be 18. So I'm just going to come in here and 18 as well. And we're going to call this again just array vid. This is going to be our actual um, file name. It'll be a DDS. Again, I'm going to hit file, save as. I like to try to save here because once we hit create, it's going to do all kinds of crazy stuff. And if you don't like your effect to go backwards, you're going to have to delete all kinds of extra empties down here and all these paths so I like to try to save it at this point that way I can go back and do some simple edits if I want so now it's as simple as it create and as you can see all the stuff it just added in it's got like 58 other empties that it's utilizing to make that path um, and then what we want to actually do to actually make the file itself is we're just going to hit export object data texture when I do that you're going to see it pop up here tell us what it's doing so it export object data texture so it made that file in no time at all uh, we're gonna go to that folder that I saved at and as you can see here's our DDS it was that simple and when I say simple look how small that image is I have to actually zoom in to actually see it and if we go image resize you're gonna see it's it's backwards instead of being 3 by 18 it's, it's 18 by 3 it's just it's uh, your width and your height so once again, your empties are actually your height of your file and your rows are your, or I'm sorry, your amount relativity is your 18, which is your, yeah, go back into here. I keep saying it backwards because it does get confusing. But yeah, your, your height is actually your number of rows and your length is actually your 18 row length is your, <clears throat> your width. So that's already made. So we're just going to go ahead and minimize this guy for now. I'm going to go right into the XML of this uh, unit and I'm going to I need to also copy so here's the texture folder and here's the array video so I'm just going to simply copy this into here in fact I think I put too many R's in there it doesn't really matter I guess I'm going to delete that one because that's the one I was testing with so I'm going to simply copy this file name, come into the placeable here. I'm going to simply plug it in. And once again, we're 3 by 18. I'm going to hit save. We're going to jump in um, 
to get it to actually change, I have to go in and sell this placeable. Sell, yes, hit OK, go back to production, bring that up, and twist it around so we can see it. And then once we activate it, go to productions, activate, and you can see how it's doing the zigzag around. And it, it even gets a little, you can see how it kind of, it's hard to tell in this effect because like I said, it's, but you can see how it's coming out, zigzagging across and taking a car, taking away this way and then going down. Now, because it's using a cultivator effect, it's coming from an I3D that actually spreads out towards the end of the actual array. You can do some different things as far as uh, scale your transform group or your transform node. And if you were to take the end effect and actually move it way off of, down to the bottom here you can keep it narrower if you wanted but so the biggest key to this video is just to show you how simple it is to actually make that uh, array effect uh, DDS file uh, hopefully this was helpful I uh, hope I didn't confuse anyone any more than they already were like I said huge thanks to Dogface. sorry for not being very active just been a little bit busy guys um, once again any questions feel free to uh, comment um, jump on my discord join my discord and once again I will put a link to dogface tutorial so you can actually see every detailed step we said he did an excellent job of putting it in text form on what to do and how to do it until uh, next time guys uh, thanks for watching we'll catch you later